Hey guys, it's Jim. Hope you're doing well today. Thanks for joining me. This is part five of my Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial series. And this version today, or this episode, is all about masking. So you've probably heard of brush masking, layer masking, uh, there's a radial and gradient mask, there's a luminosity mask. So I'm gonna talk about these things. And while we can't cover every single thing, uh, feel free to ask questions, leave questions and comments in the uh, uh, down below. And uh, let's get started. So um, I've got a base layer here and I've done nothing to it. You can see all the filters are still white, which means nothing's happened. This is a three exposure HDR that I already brought into Aurora and merged. So uh, what I always do is I add a new layer and add an adjustment layer. And the reason is, is because um, masking generally allows you to paint changes into a specific part of a photo. So for example, let's say you want to change some colors or details, but only in a, only in a specific part of a photo. Then what you do is you make those adjustments on this layer, you grab the brush, you mask them in, and they apply selectively. Then if you want to uh, apply more you know, changes to a different part of the photo, then you come back, add a new layer, do it again. So in this way, you stack layers and use masks continually to just get refinements and to you know end up with the final result that you're looking for. So let me show you how it works. I've got this new layer I added. I'm just gonna go into the basic panel. I'm gonna warm up the photo, give it some contrast, some HDR enhance, maybe a little smart tone. Uh, I'm not trying to make it look nice. This isn't how I would edit the shot. I'm just wanna show you how masking works. So I made those changes and let's say I wanna apply them selectively, let's say just to the sky right now. So you click on the brush icon, you come over here and you have some options. First option is brush, right? I'm gonna use a brush mask. There's also radial and gradient. We'll get to those in a minute. You can choose paint or erase. Over here you have size, right? You can increase or decrease the size. You can increase or decrease the softness. And of course you can change the opacity. These are basically presets. So if you click these, notice that these tools up here change. So each click, things are different. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do probably more than 25. I'm gonna do, let's say 100% softness. And with my left bracket key, I'm gonna go to the left and that shrinks the size of the brush. Now we're in paint and we're in brush. So all I do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna drag my cursor across the sky. So what I'm doing is using a brush mask uh, on this layer to apply uh, the changes specifically just to the sky. And there you go. You can always click this eyeball, shows you where your mask is. And if you wanted to hit a race, you could come over here, let's say, oops, uh, left bracket key, make that a little smaller, clean up some of that if you're overlapping some of your mountains. And I did a really sloppy job. I'm not trying to get precise here. I'm just trying to show you the flexibility of the tools. So close that. If you don't like it, you can delete the mask. Now you've got a couple of options here. Uh, in this uh, drop-down menu, and this is invert. So if I click invert, you'll see that the mask is flipped in the photo. That which was in the sky is now down below and vice versa. So that's a, a handy little um, little tool. If I hit fill, it'll just fill the entire uh, image layer with that mask. So in other words, the changes will be across the entire layer. Copy would allow me, if I spend a lot of time doing a fine outline of that mountain, and then I wanted to apply that mask on a new layer to make a different change. I could hit copy, go add a new layer, and then hit paste, and it'll paste that mask on the, uh, on the new layer. Often what I'll do is, if I spend a lot of time outlining these mountains, and then I wanna make changes below, like in the uh, mountains in the foreground instead of the sky, I'll use this mask, I'll hit copy, add a new layer, hit paste, and then invert, and it'll just flip the mask. So it's a time-saving step. Uh, density, if you look, if I go all the way to the left and density is zero, basically that allows the entire um, layer to show through. So these changes that I made here show across the entire layer. So as I move density to the right, it's basically not allowed, and I'm still inverted by the way. So there we go. Um, if I'm all the way to the right, then um, the changes, um, the pixels outside of the mask aren't being affected, whereas they are being affected if I go this way, right? And then feather, you probably won't see that much. Yeah, you can tell a little bit. Basically, that's the softness of the mask. How's the gradient, the zone of, you know, where it sort of goes from being a, a non-mask to mask, what does that look like? So it just changes it so you can get a smoother transition. That's what that's for. So 
Uh, that's how that works. So that's a brush mask, and that's how it works. So all you do when you're done, you say, I'm done, and there's your mask. You can see it uh, there. Obviously, if you click on this, you can also click on that to see it. But I'm done, and uh, let's say I'm happy with my mask. I'm done. Then I can add a new layer and keep going. So, however, I'm not done. I'm going to go mask here, and I'm going to say delete mask. And I've removed the mask that I just created. So I'm back on the same uh, layer that I added, layer zero. It's not the base layer. That's this one. This is layer zero, the one that I added. And all the changes, they apply across the entire thing. But this time, I want to apply them differently. So I'm going to click brush, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say radial mask. Now, a radial mask is a circle. So it says click and drag to draw a circle. So I would just do this. And notice that you get this circle, right? Now, I could bring it over here if I wanted to. But you'll notice um, I'm doing this in a corner for a reason. You'll notice that um, you need to invert it if you want it, the, the stuff inside the mask to be uh, affected, right? So I'm going to hit invert, OK? Uh, so now. Inside the mask is affected with these changes over here. Outside is not. Now you can move the mask around with uh, that center circle. You can grab this to increase the size of that. And you can also grab this one to increase the size of sort of the feathered zone. Um, and then you can also grab this guy to change the shape of it. Now in this case, you know, you can make changes like that to make it look like the sun shining from the corner or something like that. Uh, but anyway, that's how you do it. And, uh, you know, if you click on that, again, you can see the mask. So I'm going to say done. Let's say I'm happy with that. I got a little bit of fake sunshine coming in. And that's how you do a radial mask. So I'm going to go back over here to the menu, mask and delete mask. So now, again, we're back to the, the base photo with the one extra layer that has the same edits on it. So this time, we're going to do a gradient mask. So uh, once again, grab the mouse, come over here. And instead of brush or radial, we're going to say gradient. Now this time it says click and drag to draw the gradient. So you just grab somewhere wherever you want the gradient to start and you just drag it down. You can use the white button to reposition. You can use the outer uh, band there to change the size. And you can use this band to change the size. And then this line, you can rotate it. So it's, it's very flexible. And all I do is I just kind of position this. Basically, this is the zone of softness. I don't know what it's called effectively, but it's it's the transitional piece of the mask. So the bigger this is, the softer the transition is going to be over a greater area. If you want a really tight mask, you go something like that. And you can see it's basically a blue line and a yellow line. And we don't want that, right? Because we're trying to make it, you know, sort of pretend to be kind of natural. So it would be something more like that. And that's a gradient mask. Very simple, very easy. And you say done and you're done. And there you go. It's been applied across the top of the photo. So I can show you the mask. And you can see it's darker here. And it sort of fades as it comes down. Whoops, I just uh, accidentally hit erase uh, there. So anyway, it sort of fades as it comes down because that's what the gradient does. It's not a hard mask unless you shrink those two bars together really closely. So that's how a gradient mask works. And I love those things. I use them quite a bit. So done and done. Now, I'm going to delete that, so I'm going to go to Mask, Delete Mask, and hey, once again, we're back in that same layer that I added, layer zero, with these changes, and they're applying across the entire layer because I haven't applied a mask yet. So now I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to Mask, and I'm going to say Create Luminosity Mask. You'll see it up here that it's creating one, and then in just a moment, it's going to be applied to the photo, and you'll see the changes, and there you go. So. Let me pause, let me hit this, and let me show you a luminosity mask. That's a luminosity mask. So you'll hear a lot about these in Photoshop forums and places. People use them a lot. And basically, it's a mask. In this case, it's created automatically by Aurora. But it's a mask that varies in intensity based on the levels of light. So the brighter parts of the photo, which in this case is the sky, have a, a higher uh, opacity of a mask, right? You, there's more mask, it's more intense, and therefore the, the slider adjustments are more intense in that section of the photo. And then in the darker parts of the photo, look at that horse, there's like no mask whatsoever covering that horse. There's very little on that horse because they're a little bit lighter, but that dark horse has basically no mask on him. And so that's what the luminosity mask does because he's really dark, the intensity of the mask there is tiny, 
whereas the intensity of the mask in the brighter parts of the photo is much more. And so what you get is, let me hit done, is a very subtle implementation of your changes across that layer. And so it's a beautiful thing. It's really awesome. It's a great feature to have. Let me turn it off. There's the before and there's the after. You can see it's a very subtle change. It just kind of warmed up the photo, gave it a little bit of detail, and that's because of the luminosity mask. So let me make a, a point that's gonna come up, and that is, hey Jim, I had Aurora 2017, the last version, and the luminosity mask in that one allowed you to get into the histogram and choose zones based on light levels and make adjustments and exclude zones you don't wanna use, and da da da. Yes, it did. And we don't have that right now in Aurora 18, but I've been told by MacFun engineers, it's either coming back uh, the same or it's gonna be better. So don't ask me what it's gonna be because I don't know, um, but I know you're curious and that's good. Everybody's curious, I'm curious myself, but they told me it's either gonna be the same zone system as Aurora 2017 had or it's gonna be a new one that's better. So we're gonna wait and see. I don't know when the update's coming. It'll be a free update for those uh, people that already have it. So just hang in there, it's coming. Um, but I wanted to cover luminosity masks anyway in this edition, even though it's probably going to change because that's what it is. Um, I have an old video. If you go back in the archives of my YouTube channel, just look back, uh, you know, nine months ago or something, and it's called Introduction to Luminosity Masks, and that covers luminosity masks in a bit more detail if you're curious. And by the way, there's 40 million other videos and websites you can read uh, or find to read about it. So that's the other kind of mask. Uh, and that's a luminosity mask. Now you have some additional um, options here on all the mask layers, same things as we talked about kind of up in here when we were in the mask um, on each layer. So that's really it. We covered the brush mask on layers, we covered the radial and the gradient mask on layers, and also applying a luminosity mask. I hope that it helps. There's a lot you can do. It gives you a ton of control and flexibility. Highly, highly uh, recommend taking advantage of these tools and getting familiar with it. Just start a new layer, make some changes, grab a m brush mask. It doesn't even matter what the changes are. Just experiment, get comfortable with it because you can do a lot. So that's this video, my friends. That's part five of my tutorial series on Aurora HDR 2018. And that was all about masking. I hope that it helps. If you like this video, hit like. I appreciate it. Click the like button. Leave me a comment. I'm, I'm always uh, curious to hear feedback and interact with anybody that's watched my videos. And most of all, please subscribe. Um, Share it with your friends. Do that. Whatever it takes. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I appreciate it once again. Have a good day. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time, friends. Adios.